today I have another CDB bracelet tutorial for you. So, a while ago I made a video of three different CDB bracelets that you could make and I showed you all of them in one video. So I've decided to repeat that and make some nice stackable bracelets for you. Or show you how to make them, I don't actually make them for you, I make them for myself. But, you understand the point of a YouTube tutorial, right? Today I'm going to show you how to make these three different types of bracelet. This one is just a plain strong bracelet with a nice tassel on it. This one is using a technique uh, that's quite popular in bead weaving called right angle weave. And this one uses an eye pin or just wire because I don't have any eye pins. And it's attached to chain and also has a charm. And I've gone with a tea theme which is why I'm wearing my tea necklace from Pixel Pearls because why wouldn't I want to coordinate? These bracelets are super simple and perfect for those wanting to get into jewellery making but don't really know where to start. So, I better stop waffling, let's just get on with the tutorial shall we? So the first bracelet I'm going to make you is the one with the tassel and the charm, just because it's possibly the easiest one to make. I don't know, they're all quite simple. So, you are going to need a piece of cardboard. The size is up to how big you want your tassel to be, but you can always trim it down, so better to make it bigger than smaller. And it is folded in half. You're going to take your embroidery thread and you're going to wrap it around a few times. I think I did about 10-ish, up to 15. No, I must have been around 10. Then you're going to trim off the excess and you are going to grab a needle and preferably some thread that matches. For some reason I didn't have the brain wave to just take off a strand of embroidery thread, otherwise I would have done that. But I used white because, um, yeah, basically. Then I am going to basically go up and through the folded piece of cardboard, not going through any thread, going underneath the thread. Then I'm going to gather it all together and tie it in a knot. Um, and this is just to, like I just said, gather all the threads together and tighten a nice tight double knot, do a few more knots if you want to, wrap it round a few more times if you want to. Then I'm just going to slide off my tassel, off of the cardboard. Then I'm going to grab a six millimeter jump ring. This is just a silver plated six millimeter jump ring. I'm gonna grab my chain nose pliers and twist them open. Always twist your jump rings, never pull them apart. It's easier to close the jump rings if they're twisted open. Then you drop it because that is crucial and then just attach, well, put the jump ring where you've just wrapped that thread around basically. Then you're going to want to trim off the excess thread, as in the thread that you've just wrapped around, not the tassel itself. Then grabbing some more of your embroidery floss, you are going to wrap that around the tassel just to gather it together make it look nice and then you're going to tie that in a double knot as well once again you can tie it in a few knots if you want to I just did a simple double knot and then um, after I trimmed off the ends I added a bit of fabric glue but I forgot to say that bit and show that bit because I'm apparently a bit disorganized at the moment but Trim off your excess threads, make sure you secure it with a bit of fabric glue or something um, so it doesn't come undone. And then trim your tassel down so it is the size that you want it to be. And there is your tassel complete. Wonderful stuff. So then you are going to grab your necklace ends, some monofilament thread and a couple of crimp tubes. And you also need your beads. You can use any seed beads that you want for this, any size, any shape, any colour. But it just so happens that I'm going to be using size 11 Delica beads. List of all supplies can be found in the description box of the video, as it can in most of my videos. Then I'm going to take a length of monofilament thread, which is a, like 25 centimetres long-ish. You might need longer if your wrist is larger than mine. Then you're going to attach uh, or thread on your necklace end and your crimp tube. You're going to slide your crimp tube as close to the end of your monofilament thread as you can and give it a squish. And 
that secures everything in place. Believe it or not, that is what holds your whole bracelet together and it works a treat. Then you can thread on a needle if you like. It is not essential. You can just pick beads up using the thread. I just found a needle is much quicker and more time efficient. Um, that's possibly just because I'm used to picking up beads with a needle, who knows. But you're just going to pick up your beads in any pattern that you like until your bracelet is long enough to fit around your wrist. Once your bracelet's long enough for you, you're going to take the needle off and apparently fight with it a bit. And then you are once again going to pop on a necklace end and a crimp tube. And you're going to repeat what you did at the beginning, but the other way around. Well, no, not the other way around at all. Ignore me. You are going, you're not going to pull the crimp tube to the end. You're going to push it as close as you can to the other beads, but not so close that it's really stiff. It, you judge by eye, you'll be able to work it out. And then trim off any excess, because otherwise that'll scratch you. Then you're going to want to close up your necklace end, which I demonstrate in much more detail in a second, because I'm apparently very disorganized. So you're going to want to hold half of your necklace end in your pliers, push one side, the other side against your necklace, against your pliers, and then just squash your necklace end closed and that is it all fastened. Then grabbing your round nose pliers, you are going to make a loop using that hooky bit of the necklace end. I bet you're all wondering what that was for if you've not seen these before. Make a nice little loop. Then you are going to grab your four millimeter jump rings, your clasp, your six millimeter jump ring, your tassel, and any charms that you want to attach as well. So pick up your four millimeter jump ring, attach it to your necklace end, and then pop your tassel onto it and twist it back closed. And then another four millimeter jump ring, twist that open. I'm ahead of myself. And then you're gonna to want to go through the first four millimeter jump ring that we attached. So attach that onto the same jump ring and attach your charm. Mine's just this really cute cupcake charm. I've had this, I've had this for absolutely ages and didn't know what to use it for. Now I have a use for it. And then finally, pick up another four millimeter jump ring. You're gonna get sick of me saying four millimeter jump ring. I'm sick of myself saying it. And once again, go through the original jump ring you attached. And then you're going to attach your six millimeter jump ring because that is what your clasp is going to clip into for easy fastening or easier fastening anyway. So on the other end, you're going to pick up a jump ring. You are going to attach that onto the other end, uh, the other necklace end and attach your clasp and then twist it back closed. Basically by the time you've finished making these bracelets you're going to be very good at opening and closing jump rings which is a very useful skill if you want to get into jewellery making and one that I highly recommend learning. There we go, that is the first bracelet complete. Da -da -da. Very cute and very summery. I don't know, just thought it was nice for this time of year. So now the second bracelet this one has like a bar of beads and then it's got chain around it. It's once again using a different technique. So if you have an eye pin, use an eye pin. I don't, I'm using four millimeter or 0.4 millimeter, sorry. Um, silver plated wire, 0.6 will also work. So cut off a length, it's up to you how long you want your bar to be. If you're using eye pins, obviously you have a bit more of a restriction, but we're going to be making a loop. So grab your round nose pliers, Hold it very close to the end because you don't want it to be a massive loop if you're using teeny tiny beads. You're going to turn it at a 45 degree angle away from you and I explain this more in my cute Christmas earrings video. But you're going to push the wire over, make a loop around um, your round nose pliers. And then grabbing your chain nose pliers, you're going to twist some of the excess wire around and this makes a nice wrapped loop, which I think is very neat and tidy and means that the loop will come undone, nothing will fall off it. And that's a treat, especially as, you know, if, you, if you're wearing it on your wrist, you don't suddenly want a cascade of beads. A bit embarrassing. So trim off any excess that you may have. And then you are going to start, once again, picking up beads in any order that you choose and for as long as you want it to. Um, there is no set length. I think mine's about five centimeters from loop to loop. So 
so just pick up as many beads as you like and in any design that takes your fancy. Wonderful stuff. So I have threaded all my beads on. Then I am going to hold my pliers in the same place that I held the first end because you want the loops to be the same size. And then you're going to make another loop. So twist your pliers 45 degrees away from you, up and over with that longer bit of wire. Rotate your pliers so they're upright and pull the wire around to finish off the loop. Then you are going to take your chain nose pliers and wrap the wire around it. So the only thing you need to make sure is that you leave enough space between your pliers and the beads to be able to make a good wrapped loop and not be stressed for time and break beads and all sorts of terrible things that could happen. Well, I suppose in the grand scheme of things they're not that terrible, but yeah, regarding this it's not the best. And once again, trim off any excess using wire cutters. I mean, you can use scissors, but I don't recommend it because it will blunt them. Nobody likes blunt scissors. So grab a ruler. Measure how long, oh, four and a half centimeters close. Measure how long your bar is. And then you want to grab your chain and you want to, well, my wrist is 17 centimeters. So I trimmed off at 12 because then I had to leave a bit of extra for my, for the clasp. So then you are going to want to cut that length of chain in half. So for me, each length of chain was six centimeters long. Hindsight, it was a little bit big, but you know, doable. Then you're going to need yet more four millimeter jump rings because that's what fits through this chain. I tried six millimeter and it didn't fit through, which was kind of infuriating. So you're going to twist open a jump ring, attach one end of your beaded bar and the uh, one end of the chain and then twist open another jump ring and attach that to the other end of the beaded bar and then you want to um, slide on the other half of the chain and obviously the reason we've cut it in half is so we can attach a clasp but I figured you worked that one out already because you're not morons. So. Now we're going to attack to the charm, so I'm going to twist open yet another jump ring and just pick a side, attach that to the first jump ring and then attach the charm, which is this incredibly cute teapot. Once again, I've had it for a while, didn't know what to use it for, decided to use it for this. Wonderful stuff. Then you are going to attach one of the jump rings to one end and the clasp to the other end of the chain. Well, that's obviously so you can fasten the bracelet. What you could also do, if you didn't want to use chain, you could use like some form of cord and put it, put it through the loop on your beaded bar and then like double it over on each side and do a slip knot but yeah now we are going to make this right angle weave bracelet which looks like little butterflies I think which is very apt for this color scheme wonderfully my camera deleted part of the footage so you're going to start out by cutting 250 centimeter lengths of monofilament thread and then you're going to put both of the ends through a necklace end and a crimp tube squash the crimp tube and then you can add each strand onto a needle or add a needle onto each strand um, if that is what you fancy. So I'm going to start out by picking up two seed beads on each needle and slide it down. Once again you don't have to use a needle if you don't want to. This thread is sturdy enough, stiff enough to just be able to pick up a needle anyway. Nope, pick up a bead anyway. But yeah, I find it easier with a needle. Then I'm going to pick up one seed bead on one of the needles, so only on one of them, and then I'm going to cross the other needle back through it. Not back through it, but through it the other way. So the threads are crossing over through the seed bead, like so. There's a visual demonstration coming up very soon of a wonderfully made diagram that I made on Microsoft Word 
almost as good as my Super Duo and Seed Bead Triangle tutorial. I'm not going to lie. It's up there with that kind of artistry. I know you're excited. Wait for it. Wait for it. There it is. So, um, obviously this just shows one bead, but a, a bead, one or two beads are threaded on each needle and then the one in the middle is like the crossover bead. Obviously this demonstrates one, need, uh, one bead on each side, but just imagine there's two. Isn't it a good diagram of right angle weave? Uh, my uh, Microsoft Word artistry skills aren't going to improve anytime soon. But yeah, just keep repeating these steps until your bracelet is long enough to fit around your wrist. You've got the gist by now. Make it just a touch shorter because you need to accommodate for the chain. No, for the clasp. That's the word. But um, this is a really useful stitch. You can make some really lovely bracelets with it and I'm sure I will show you some in the future. And it looks far more impressive. It looks far more difficult than it is, but yes. When your bracelet is complete, like this one, you are going to take your needles off the ends and the ends might be a bit gross so you can trim them down if you want to. Um, yeah, I do. It's just from them being threaded with the needle, they're all bent and screwed up and difficult to thread through things. So then you're going to thread them through a necklace end. This is what you needed to do in the beginning that I lost the footage for. Useful. Then you are going to attack uh, thread on your crimp tube which I'm apparently finding far more difficult than it actually is come on Hannah. there we go wonderful then you're going to slide that down and you might have to hold it in place because it's gonna want to like spring up but you might want to hold it so it's down and then crimp with a pair of chain nose pliers and snip off any excess because once again if you leave the ends too long then they scratch you on your wrist and it's not very comfortable wearing I won't lie then you are going to close up the ends just as we did before and attach clasps in the exact same way as we did before I'm sure you're sick of me saying jump rings so I won't put, make you go through that and here are the three bracelets finished in their glorious forms Definitely a tea party theme, I thought it was cute, and yeah. So now you know how easy it is to make these super cute stackable bracelets. You can do a variety of color combinations and themes. I thought the pastel -y colors with the tea stuff would be quite cute and whimsical. Of course, you don't have to use size 11 Delicas to do this. You can use normal seed beads, as I said. You can use whatever size of seed bead you would like. It is up to you. There is a very customizable bracelet. And if you did enjoy this video and you want to make yet more seed bead jewelry, I popped a link to the other seed bead bracelet tutorial. It is down in the description box. It's also on the eye on the screen. So, you know, make sure you check that out if that is your thing. Don't forget to check out the description box below for links to all of the materials you use and where I acquired mine from. If you did enjoy this tutorial, please feel free to give this video a big ol' thumbs up. Your support means the world to me and why not hit subscribe? You get a new craft tutorial here on this channel every single Sunday and then I post two bonus videos in the week as well. Links to the bonus videos for this week can be found in the description box as well, as well as on the screen with the eye thing. You've got the routine by now. I will be popping these bracelets into my giveaway box and they will be given away to the lucky winner when I do my 50,000 subscriber giveaway. So if you want to be in with a chance of winning these, you've got to get me to 50,000 subscribers first. So feel free to subscribe yourself and don't forget to share this video with someone that you think will enjoy it. Don't forget to check out the description box below for links to all of my social media. And with all that being said, I shall see you very soon in my next video. Bye. Today we have a Kumahimo tutorial for you. So I already have a tutorial on how to do the standard eight 
strand two colored spirally kumahimo. I uploaded that a couple of Christmases ago, I think. 